Good afternoon. Please remain standing for the national anthem and then the invocation. The national anthem will be presented, sung by Joshua Wine, and the invocation will be offered by Ms. Haley Hynoth. bow your heads. Father God, what a day to rejoice in. We come to you today with joy and thankfulness, first and foremost looking to you with love and gratitude for who you are and what you've done. Lord, thank you for each and every one of these bright, promising, potential-filled men and women who are celebrating this wonderful milestone in each of their lives. Thank you for directing their steps with focus, discipline, and determination. Thank you for blessing them with opportunities and challenges that have shaped them into the individuals they are today. Thank you for the mentors, teachers, family, and friends that have supported them, encouraging them throughout their lives to become all that they can be. Thank you, Lord, for Troy University and the faculty who has given so much of their time and energies to these young people. Thank you for the unique skills and areas of study that you've directed them towards. May they always utilize them to contribute to the greater good and for the furthering of your kingdom. I pray that you would bless this ceremony, the message to be given today, and all else that you have prepared for the graduating class of 2012. In your name we pray, amen. Would you please be seated for our musical presentation, featuring the Troy University Trumpet Ensemble under the direction of Dr. Michael Huff. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jack Hawkins, Chancellor of Troy University. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ingram, and good afternoon. What a pleasure it is to welcome you on behalf of our Board of Trustees to 
a day we consider to be one of the most important of the year at Troy University, spring commencement. This is an extraordinary group of uh, graduating students today. They come from 26 states, 10 different countries, uh, to a university that's increasingly known as an international university where students from some 60 countries study together. And on any given day, you can hear 80 different languages spoken. But we're all Trojans, and it's a great day to come together and, and to celebrate achievement. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the platform party and several special guests. I would ask them to stand and remain standing, and then we can recognize all as a group. Members of our Board of Trustees, the Honorable Gerald Dial, President Pro Tem, the Honorable Karen Carter, the Honorable Ed Kroll, the Honorable Roy Drinkard, the Honorable Dr. Doug Hawkins, the Honorable Lamar Higgins, the Honorable Charles Nalen, the Honorable Alan Owen, and the Honorable Gibson Vance. Our speaker, whom I will introduce uh, in more detail later, Coach Don Maestri. Haley Hinote, Ms. Hinote, a student from Pace, Florida, delivered our invocation. Our administrative leadership includes Dr. Earl Ingram, the Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. John Schmidt, the Senior Vice Chancellor for Advancement and External Relations, Dr. Jim Bookout, Senior Vice Chancellor for Finance and Business Affairs, and Dr. John Dew, the Senior Vice Chancellor for Student Services and Administration. And representing our academic colleges and schools, Dr. Jim Bob Sand Saunders, College of Arts and uh, Sciences, Dr. Kay Sheridan, the College of Business, Professor Pam Allen, the College of Communication and Fine Arts, Dr. Don Jeffrey, the College of Education, Dr. Damon Andrew, the College of Health and Human Services, and Dr. Diane Barron, the Associate Provost and Dean of the Graduate School. Other members of our platform party, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Bonnell, Army ROTC, and Lieutenant Colonel Chris Shannon, Air Force ROTC. Mr. Will, William Thompson, the SGA President, and Dr. Jan Oliver, who was given the honor today of carrying the University Mace in our processional. Several special guests that I want to call your attention to, including Dr. Doug Mims, the President of uh, the, the National Alumni Association, the former Vice President for, uh, for Financial Affairs, Bill Hopper, and his wife, Debbie. Bill is a member of our National uh, Association Board of Directors. Ms. Sharon Maestri, the wife of our speaker. Ms. Annette Owen, the wife of Trustee Alan Owen. And the former Dean, long-term Dean of our College of Education and his wife, Dr. and Mrs. James Kimbrough. And last, maybe first in my life, certainly, uh, is my wife, Ms. Janice Hawkins. Please join me in recognizing all of these people. There is, a, uh, all of the students are special, but I'd call your attention to a group of students who have come a long way to take advantage of the Troy experience. Some of you may be familiar that Troy, a number of years ago, was the prototype university in a program called One to One, and it's a partnership now that includes a number of universities in China that allows students in China an opportunity to study for a year in residence there, and they come to Troy for two years and then return for the last year, at which time the students qualify for a bachelor's degree from Troy and a bachelor's degree from the partner university. It's been an extraordinarily successful program. We're pleased that several students in the 121 program are with us this afternoon as they embark in the next few days in their return to China. So I would ask that the 121 students please stand up and let us wish you safe travel. We thank you. Thank you so much. This ceremony underscores the fact that Troy truly is becoming an international setting. Among these graduates are 14 students who studied with us in Jubail, Saudi Arabia, and traveled over 7,000 miles 
to attend this ceremony. To this special group, I say congratulations, and I would say welcome to Troy. Would our students uh, graduating today from Saudi Arabia please stand up and let us say welcome to Troy, Alabama. <laughs> Thank you. 125 years ago, this university was established. That was in 1887. A motto was coined at that time. It said that we educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, and the body to act. That's a powerful statement, and it's as relevant in 2012 as it was in 1887. And we are proudly celebrating 125 years of service to this state, this nation, and indeed, increasingly to the world. This day represents the culmination of lots of hard work, and it gives us an opportunity to celebrate the spirit of Troy University. And that spirit is established on some very solid foundations. The students who have benefited from that foundation and principles are sitting with us today, and we're so proud of them. And it's time to say, mission accomplished and job well done. But I think our students who are graduates today would be the first to say they didn't get here alone. You know, it's seldom in life that you do little more than stand on the shoulders of other people, and there are a lot of broad shoulders that have allowed you to get to this point, not the least of whom are those representatives in the, fac in the back of this uh, gymnasium this afternoon referred to as faculty. Little could be accomplished absent the faculty. And I want to ask the faculty to stand up and let us say thank you for a job well done. Please stand up the representatives of our faculty. Thank you so much. And there's one final, perhaps the most important group in your lives, and that would include your families. I want to ask the members of the families of our graduating students to stand up and let all of us say thank you for the love and support you have provided these outstanding, outstanding graduates. Please, members of the faculty, family, please stand up. Thank you so much, and thank you for sharing your loved ones with us. To the graduates, just a very brief message. I know that you've already realized that life is indeed a journey and not just a destination. It's a great journey. There will be opportunities along the way, and you have learned already how to take advantage of those opportunities, and we're proud of you. But an education is really about making a living and a life not just a living alone, because there's far more to life than just the ability to earn a paycheck. And I think that's one of the great things about a university education. Your opportunities have been seized, and we are so proud of your achievements. And I'm, a con I'm very confident that you're prepared to leave here and to make a difference in the society and the communities that await you. I would uh, hasten to say, remember the three Bs. Be present. Woody Allen said 90% of winning is showing up. So be there when you're supposed to be. The second B, be in love with what you do. I think the closer you get to the goal line, the more you realize that uh, life is short. You have a great opportunity as that window of opportunity opens, but it'll soon close. And so take full advantage and find a career that you love. Don't do something the rest of your life that you don't love. Life is too short. And the third is be better, or it's be better than consistent. Be constant. Never stop thinking about ways to improve your performance. I know that all of you have the ability to be the very best at what you do. And that's what we encourage you to achieve. The gentleman I have the pleasure this afternoon has long since learned that lesson. He's a gentleman that is very familiar to this uh, facility in which we find ourselves. Coach Don Maestri came to Troy 30 years ago in 1982. 
and there are only three other Division I coaches who have served their universities longer than Don Maestri. His teams have won almost 500 games, and his 1992 team, and some of us were here, set a record. And you, you, this, this I still find hard to believe, even though I was sitting in one of the seats just to my right when our Troy Trojans scored 258 points in one game. And the other team scored 141, so that was almost 400 points in one basketball game. We immediately received recognition from around the world. I had an alumnus in England to send me a news clipping the very next day where our Trojans were written about having achieved this remarkable score. He has led our program from Division II to Division I and has achieved at all levels. Don Maestri has made the head coach's position at Troy University a better job. His teams have been successful in this building, in fact, so much so that it's difficult for us to invite teams here who aren't obligated by conference affiliation to come because he's won 75% of his games in this building. He's been named the coach of the year by five different conferences, and he's a member of the Wiregrass Sports Hall of Fame, and this August, on August the 10th, he will be inducted into the very first class of Troy University Athletics Hall of Fame, a major achievement. But Don Maestri is more than a Hall of Fame coach. He's a Hall of Fame person. He's devoted uh, to his wife, Sharon, and in fact, Coach Maestri says he didn't start winning until he married Sharon. And if you sit next to Sharon in a basketball game, you understand why. There's nobody that gives a referee a harder time than Miss Sharon Maestri. <laughs> they have two children, Julie and Michael, and they are a very important part of the Troy University family. Please join me in welcoming a gentleman who can tell you lots of stories about Sartain Hall and is excited about our new arena, which opens in just a few short months. Coach Don Maestri. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I want to thank Dr. Hawkins and the Board of Trustees for giving me this uh, special opportunity. I must say that that was the second best introduction I've ever had. The best was uh, when they invited me to speak at a banquet some years ago and I got to introduce myself. <laughs> <clears throat> you all have a basketball coach for a graduation speaker. <laughs> Very unique. Not a lot of coaches get this opportunity. As I was trying to think of what to say, uh, after Dr. Hawkins invited me, I started uh, feeling like a mosquito in a nudist colony. I didn't know where to begin. <laughs> and I've been getting a lot of advice from the Board of Trustees. It's kind of like uh, what Henry VIII said to his uh, fifth wife, this won't last long. <laughs> but the one thing I really want to get to, because of the age you're in now, is the texting. And after uh, uh, learning a little bit about myself, initials like LOL, uh, BFF, OMG, et cetera, uh, one that you have to be careful of is BC. And I read this article and I thought it would be appropriate for you all so in the future when you text, be very careful using, mixing up the BCs. This was the article. I know a newly married couple who bought a home in the country. Only after they had moved in, did they discovered they couldn't find any bathroom commode. So the right wife texts the former owner about it. But being a bride, she was a little bashful about spelling out bathroom commode, so she just asked him where the BC was. The former owner was puzzled by that and finally decided she meant Baptist Church. So he replied, I regret the delay in answering your letter, your text, but I now take pleasure in informing you, informing you that a BC is located nine miles from your home <laughs> and is capable of seating 250 people. <laughs> this is unfortunate if you're in the habit of going regularly. 
but you may like to know that a great number of people take their lunch and make a day of it. <laughs> they usually arrive early and leave late. The last time my wife and, and I went was six years ago, <laughs> and we had to stand up the whole time. It may interest you to know that a supper has been planned to raise money to buy more seats. I would like to say it pains me very much not to be able to go more regularly, but it surely is no lack of desire on my part. As we grow older, it seems to be more of an effort, particularly in cold weather. Hope to see you there. So be careful texting. I do want to congratulate the graduates. It's a big, big achievement. It will be a big memory for you down the road. I was fortunate enough to be with Dr. Hawkins this morning, got a chance to meet a lot of you. And uh, I've been here 30 years, and that was another inspirational moment for me, was getting to meet you all and your families and friends uh, from as far as China uh, to Elba. So it, it was uh, great to see it. It's a great achievement. And I don't think, um, you got to be careful now because you hear a lot of stories about college graduations and the graduates leaving to go into the workforce. Many of you I heard today were going into graduate school, which is really awesome. Uh, but you're not necessarily going to start off getting the job right away. And I remember when I graduated from college, I got my BS in mathematics, and I couldn't find a job. So I went back home to New Orleans, and I got a job as a vacuum cleaner salesman. That was my first job, which was a lesson that I learned early on. It's not necessarily where you start working, but it's going to be where you finish working. But the bigger lesson I learned at the vacuum cleaner job was from my sales manager, Ray Murray. Ray Murray was a little bitty guy, about five foot eight, fireball, great speaker. And he came in and told us a story one time about his upbringing, about how poor he was growing up in New Orleans, and that he decided he would love to own a Cadillac car. So what he did, he went around to all the dealerships in New Orleans, getting their brochures for Cadillac cars. And he cut the pictures out, and he wallpapered his bedroom with nothing but pictures of Cadillac cars. So that every night before he went to bed, the last thing he saw was Cadillac cars. And the first thing he saw in the morning when he woke up was Cadillac cars. He said, now when you guys came to the office this morning, you passed four Cadillacs out there. Those are all mine. And it showed me about dreaming and going for a goal. I listened to some people this morning with Dr. Hawkins uh, going to vet school. My brother was a veterinarian going to med school. Uh, some uh, young lady said she was going to UAB for med school. Some of you wanted to be uh, in nursing at graduate school, uh, getting your PhDs. Uh, some of you in business are uh, going to end up being CEOs. Uh, you know, Oprah Winfrey was sitting out in, uh, at Tennessee State one day graduating, and the two people next to her didn't realize they were sitting next to a future billionaire. <laughs> I don't think Oprah knew it at the time either, but what they all had going for them to be successful, and this is what I found out from the vacuum cleaners, is you must picture your success. I teach a class here, a basketball class, and I ask them all the time, how many of you got up at five o'clock in the morning this week? Well, there's not a guy or a girl in my class that would raise their hand. And then I'd say, let me tell you something. Suppose I told you to meet me at the cafeteria this past week, all of you all, at five in the morning, and when you came here this afternoon, I'd give you $10,000 each. Now, how many would come at 5 in the morning to meet me? The whole class raised their hand. <laughs> they were all saying, I can't wait to see you. You got the money. I said, yeah, I got the money. Well, what is that? Why are you so motivated to wake up at 5 in the morning? Because you could see that result early. You knew what you were getting ready to get. Well, what Oprah did and what a lot of people do, the successful people, they can see the picture before it ever happens. They can actually see the result before even coming close to achieving it. So if you want to be a doctor and you see yourself in the doctor's outfit or a veterinarian or a CEO or a teacher or a principal or a superintendent, all of these things are achievable. 
but it's got to be you. And it has to be your goal so that you will go dream about this thing and absolutely go after it. I uh, uh, did something crazy. Of course, you can tell that I'm not a normal coach because I have a lot of wild ideas. Uh, we started back in 1982 with red and white basketballs. But what I did learn about the dreaming from my sales manager guy, I took my picture out. I was in coaching high school. I finally got a high school job in New Orleans. So I took my picture and I cut about three or four of them. And I got a brochure uh, some kind of way from Mississippi State on their basketball media guide. And I took my picture and I pasted it over each assistant coach's picture. That two years from then, <laughs> I got an assistant coach's job at Mississippi State in the SEC. I don't know if it works. Try it. Get that doctor's uniform on. Get that CEO's on. Get that teacher's outfit on. Speaking of Mississippi State, uh, next year we open up a new arena. Uh, we'd like to invite you back to that first game. First of all, uh, two reasons. Uh, one, it's going to be history being made. Uh, it'll be the first game in the arena, November 9th. And secondly, it'll be the first game ever that an SEC basketball school came to Troy, Alabama to play. But bigger than that, you need to see it. You're a part of this family now, and you'll always be a part of this family. This building is absolutely, without question, one of the finest, if not finest, arenas in the nation. Not the biggest, but the finest. And when you walk in there, you will see the bells and the whistles, and you will feel class in the air. And then this morning, I took a picture with a bunch of you and your families, but I also got a chance to take a picture with Dr. Hawkins. Now, what Dr. Hawkins doesn't know is that was a picture of him congratulating me on the victory over Mississippi State. What I don't know is Dr. Hawkins saying if he doesn't win that game, that is the last picture he'll be taking in the arena. <clears throat> I did invite somebody special for you today. I think it's important that you, you get to uh, expand your horizons. I've been here 30 years. I've met a lot of great people, uh, faculty, uh, administrators, uh, but the person who inspired me the most in 30 years at this university, I invited today, Mr. Willie Cottrell. Stand up, Mr. Willie. He's right over here to my right. <laughs> you can sit down. Thank you, Mr. Willie. And he's got his little baby brother with him, Lodell, who's 79 years old. And. Uh, you probably didn't recognize him right away because you normally don't see Mr. Willie all dressed up in a suit. But Mr. Willie has worked, worked at this university for 52 years in the cafeteria. <clears throat> he retired uh, a few years ago at age 73. Inside joke, Mr. Willie, you could never work in France. Anyway, <clears throat> when you went to the cafeteria and you saw Mr. Willie, you saw a man that never missed a day of work, that was never late, that did his job well, and he always had that trademark smile that you see on that face over there right now. So, when I ended up losing some big games over the years, the next day, where did I go? To the cafeteria. I went to see Mr. Willie. Because every time you saw Mr. Willie, he brought cheer to you. He uplifted you. He made you feel better. And that, to me, is what I call a success. Mr. Willie has the, uh, he's lived life with a purpose. He has. Uh, uh, the definition, change the definition of success to happiness. And a lot of people don't realize Mr. Willie's a PhD. He's a PhD in happiness. So, <clears throat> as I finish up here today, 
The other thing that was asked was, what, have, what did you learn about success over 30 years uh, in the coaching business? And I really have found out that most of all of you are, you wouldn't be graduating. You know what hard work is. You know what um, sacrifice is. You know what discipline is. You know ideas about being successful. But I did find out one common denominator of people who were not successful over 30 years, of people who were failures over 30 years, and that is excuses. The people who made excuses were the ones that didn't make it. <clears throat> I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm overweight, I'm too skinny, I'm not bright enough, it, this is too hard, I can't uh, study this long. Excuse after excuse after excuse. The faculty in the back, and I admire our, our faculty very much because I couldn't, uh, I didn't do what they did. Um, all of them have higher degrees, most of them have PhDs. You people who I talked to this morning who were going after PhDs, PhDs are hard to get. They take hard work. Those people in the back there, you're just not looking at a normal person. You're looking at somebody who had to pay a major price to be a PhD. So you are going to have some tough times coming up, degree and all. You're going to run into a roadblock here. You're going to run into a hurdle that you got to jump over. You're going to run into an obstacle. So I want you to remember these three people. When you get ready to make an excuse that something's too difficult, you remember these three people. One, Oprah Winfrey. She graduated from a small college. She was a minority. She was a female. She's a billionaire. <laughs> She's the wealthiest woman in the world. <laughs> Two, Heather Whitestone. Had the pleasure of meeting her a few years ago, uh, Miss Janice Hawkins, and invited Heather uh, to Troy. And <clears throat> Heather was a graduate of Jacksonville State. But she went on to win Miss Alabama. Then she went on and won Miss America. She was deaf. And the last person I want you to think about is Kay Vanderveer. Kay Vanderveer is from Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Kay Vanderveer uh, on the night that she won the North Dakota Women's State Bowling Championship, in which the final game of that tournament, she bowled a 300, she was in a car wreck going home. She had over 500 stitches put in her. She was in a coma for two months. They amputated her right arm that had bowled a 300. Her feet never touched the ground for over two months. Yet four years later, Kay Vanderveer came back and won the North Dakota Women's Bowling Championship in the last game with a 295 left-handed. Thank you, Coach Maestri, for your words, your inspiration, and also predicting a victory over Mississippi State in uh, November the 9th. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. Before we proceed to the awarding of the degrees, may I ask your help in three ways? Please remain in your seats to take photographs of the graduates in order that everyone may see. Please hold your applause until all the graduates have walked across the stage, and please remain in your seats until the graduation ceremony is actually concluded. Thank you. Will the candidates for the associate's degree please rise? Chancellor Hawkins, these candidates have completed all the requirements for the associate's degree, and on behalf of the faculty, I recommend the degree be conferred. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the Chief Academic Officer and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Troy University and the laws of the State of Alabama, it's indeed a pleasure to confer upon each of you the associate's degree which you have earned. Congratulations.
Please be seated. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degree please rise. Chancellor Hawkins, these candidates have completed all the requirements for the bachelor's degree, and on behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the degree be conferred. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and approval of the chief academic officer and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Troy University and the laws of the state of Alabama, it's indeed a pleasure to confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree which you have earned. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the candidates for the master's degree please rise? <laughs> Chancellor Hawkins, these candidates have completed all the requirements for the master's degree, and on behalf of the graduate faculty, I recommend the degree be conferred. Upon the recommendation of the graduate faculty and approval of the chief academic officer and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Troy University and the laws of the state of Alabama. It's indeed a pleasure to confer upon each of you the master's degree which you have earned. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the graduates receiving the associate's degrees please come forward to receive your diplomas. Amanda Dawn Bryant. Charlene O. McClure. Denise LaCava Young. Will the graduates receiving the bachelor's degree in the College of Education please come forward to receive your diplomas. Jordan T. Adams. Christopher L. Adams, cum laude. Cassie Lane Aldridge, summa cum laude. Emily Noel Allen, cum laude. Tyler Alexander Akeri, summa cum laude. Christina Marie Espamante. Carrie Catherine Atwood.
Christina Marie Banks, cum laude. Ashley Dawn Bearden, cum laude. Ashley Elizabeth Bearden. Tammy Beaver. Is that Bivens or Bevins? Bevins. Austin White Bevins. Valerie Renee Bourne, magna cum laude. Sharika Lachey Bow. Rebecca Francis Barosma, summa cum laude. Kristen Courtney Burley, summa cum laude. Chloe Elizabeth Bryant, summa cum laude. Hayden Lee Bird, cum laude. Shanika Shante K. Aaron Elizabeth Shaver. Linda Faye Clement. Is that Elise or Alice? Elise. Megan Elise Cole, cum laude. Joshua M. Corbin, magna cum laude. Corbett Joseph Cox, Jr. Ashley Denae Denault. Dominique Devereaux David. Emily Hal Dees. Chelsea Ann Dempsey, magna cum laude. Amanda Ezel Dickey. Monique Dobbins. Zachariah Cameron Lee Dykes, summa cum laude. Russell Jorian Green, summa cum laude. James Brian Griffin, magna cum laude. Ashley Morgan Harrison. Jeremy Andrew Hendricks, cum laude. Summer Davis Hendrick, cum laude. Michael Lynn Hope Hanson. Valerie Selena Holloway. Charlie Renee Holmes. Tori Kelly Hopkins. Christina Marie Horton. Jacob Ward Husley. Here. 
Stephanie Aaron Johnson, cum laude. Amelia Lee Keller. Slayden Ray Kelly. Slayden Ray Kelly, cum laude. Brittany Johnson Kimbrough, cum laude. Brian Keith Kimbrough, cum laude. Cherry Nikki Kendall. Yulisha Konitsky, cum laude. Leanna Marie Cornegie, summa cum laude. Valerie Andrea Lake. Brianna Elizabeth LaRoche, magna cum laude. Cheney Lawrence. Stanley Frank Lawton. Laura Elaine Mackley, cum laude. Elizabeth Lee Martin. Joshua Andre Maxwell. Haley Shea McCain, cum laude. Lauren Ashley McDaniel, magna cum laude. Stephanie Michelle Myers. James R. Miller. Alexis Chandre Moore. Melissa Jeanette Mormon. Melody Reese Millars, magna cum laude. Bailey Ann Muth, cum laude. G. Jacob G. Nolan. Jennings. Elizabeth Norris, summa cum laude. Kelly Elizabeth O'Donnell, cum laude. Tatiana. Tatiana Rache Parker. William Grady Parker. Katie Crow Parrish. Sylvia C. Patterson. Sharon Michelle Patton. Sharon Michelle Patton. Deisha Monique Pegler. Richard Blake Pierce.
Calvary, Shardy Cass, Frenche, Hinton, Porter. <laughs> Kelly Ray Ramlow. Sarah L. Raziak. <laughs> Carolyn D. Rockwell, summa cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Mayen Savage. Joshua Samuel Schaefer, magna cum laude. <laughs> Leah Beverly Shepherd, cum laude. <laughs> Shelby Claire Sight. <laughs> Elisa Monet. Monica, excuse me, Elise Mon Monica Stanley. Lisa Michelle Starling Cum Laude. Christina Jane Stevenson Cum Laude. Rebecca Megan Sullivan. Danielle Nicole Sutherland. Look at me, girl. Sarah Meredith Taylor, cum laude. Shannon Elaine Thomas, summa cum laude. Akeisha D. Valerie. <laughs> Hannah Christine Walter, cum laude. Jennifer Elizabeth Watson, cum laude. Alden Elizabeth West. Stephanie Angelina Westfall. Latera Monique White. Christopher Allen Petrie. <laughs> Lloyd Alvin White III. Bobby Shane Williams. Joshua Richard Wine, magna cum laude. Tracy Weeks Wyatt. Will the graduates receiving the bachelor's degree in the Sorrell College of Business please come forward to receive your diplomas? Aaron D. Altgilbers. Megan Joyce Bledsoe. Heather Renee Butts. Chandrash Shalhan.
Jonathan William Dean. Savannah Deanne Dick. Joshua Lee Dicus. Trang Duan. Nadia K. Durham. Natia K. Durham. Joshua A. Dykus. Candace Chantel Gaines. Molly Renee Gooden. Richie Marcus Goodson. Hi Ha, magna cum laude. Rachel Norman Ham. April Lynn Hicks. <laughs> Tiffany Marie Hitchcock. <laughs> Ronald Paul Howell II. Nunwin on Win, Cum Laude. <laughs> Tiffany R. Jetter. <laughs> Gerard Clayton Johnson. William David Johnson. Mickey Kasiwa, summa cum laude. Chiwan Tron La. Han Chung Lee, Cum Laude. Mallory Kristen Mann, Cum Laude. Brandon Ira Martin. Jennifer Ashley Mayfield, magna cum laude. Colin Martin McBride. Brandon Terry McNeil. Laura Ashlyn Merritt. Catherine Susan Mitchell, summa cum laude. Catherine Renee Mullins, cum laude. Mai Nguyen.
Chakozi Wanquo. Nicholas Alexander Oliver. Kai Shan Al. Michael David Pearson. Donald Paul Pruitt. <laughs> Yan Han Chu, magna cum laude. Kiara Shanice Ravenel. Timothy L. Rockwell. Dave, Devin Blake Schaff. Alexander T. Smith. Cordero Rodriguez Smith. Stephanie Aileen Stanford Wallace, magna cum laude. Nian Zhu Soon, cum laude. Donald E. Taylor, Jr. Ethan Daniel Therfelder. Andrea Shanae Thomas. Kiwana Andriki Thomas. Nicholas Chase Thurman, summa cum laude. Yin Hu Ong. Jacob William Weber. Isherika Lolita Williams. <laughs> Matthew William Wright, magna cum laude. Yu Fei, magna cum laude. Will the graduates receiving the master's degree in the College of Education please come forward to receive your diplomas. Danielle Marie Adams. Amir Mohammed. Al Gizoni. Nashmia Fuad. Nashmia Fuad Al Samari.
Omar Abed Al Rojui. Christina Gabrielle Anderson. Joyce Ann Blair. Lauren Pierce Brooks. Tiffany Dawson Brown. <laughs> Jeremy Alonzo Clausell. Sierra. Sierra Dawn Culverhouse. Dorsey Nicole face on. Patrice Pittman Fleming. Donna Lee Flowers. Carlos DeAndre Hall. Yon Hope. Yon Hope. Yon Hope Han. Jeremy R. Jenkins. Samuel Robert Kessler. Kumyon Kim. Yuri Lee. Robert Lee Magoo. Pamela Dawson McEwen. Quisong Park. Andre Hope Skipper. Yu E. Kim. Lucretia Michelle Talbert. Haley Pittman Vickers.
Faye Young. Leslie Larie Zerbinas. Will the graduates receiving the master's degree in the Sorrell College of Business please come forward to receive your diplomas? Abdullah Hussein Abdul Majid. Ali Muhammad Al Aziri. <laughs> Khalid Saad Al Hamdi. Soha Maji Al Mutak. <laughs> Ali Al Shamrani. Mary Alicia Battle. Maritha L. Beal. Samir Aldebaj. Tadrik M. Burks. <laughs> Margaret Amy Carswell. <laughs> Kamathi Clisby. Jasmine Hope Jewell. <laughs> Alfia Kadiva. <laughs> Karen Ann Lundy. Cody Carmelita Dunn Nichols. <laughs> Nicole M. Oya. Candice Denise Robinson. Okay, Rachel Marie Tustin. <laughs> Chow Chin Wu. Yi 
Young. Abdulaziz Awid Al Anazi. Chancellor Hawkins, Coach Maestri, faculty, friends, and families of Troy. It is with great pride that I present you with the newest lieutenants in the United States Army. Later today, these young officers will take their oath of office, affirming to defend our great nation and to lead our sons and daughters serving in our Army. Second Lieutenant Aaron D. Altgilbers. A native of Daleville, Alabama, Lieutenant Al Gilbers enlisted in the Alabama Army National Guard in 2008. After completing basic and advanced individual training at Fort Sill as a cannon crew member, while a cadet, Aaron has also earned the air assault wings from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Oh. Oh. Aaron commissions on active duty in the Field Artillery Corps. He is married to Jamie Al Gilbers, and they have one daughter, Adelaide. Their first duty assignment will be with the King of Battle, the Field Artillery at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant, Jeremy A. Hendrick. <laughs> Jeremy Hendrick is a native of Brantley, Alabama. He joined the Army National Guard in 2008, completed basic combat training and advanced individual training, also at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Jeremy was also recently selected to receive the Governor's Outstanding Service Member Award, which goes to the top cadet in the State National Guard. Jeremy commissions as a second lieutenant into the Alabama Army National Guard and the Military Police Corps. He is continuing his professional education with seminary. His plan is to pursue the Army's Chaplain's Corps. Jeremy is married to the Ms. Summer Davis Hendrick. <laughs> Chancellor Hawkins, Colts, Ministry, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I present to you the newest Troy Second Lieutenants entering the United States Air Force. These graduates will commission with an effective date of rank of 11 May 2012, as directed by the President of the United States of America. They are taking an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and will be assigned to the Air Force mission of flying, fighting, and winning in the domains of air, space, and cyberspace. Second Lieutenant T. Alexis Harvey of Bay Mionet, Alabama is being assigned as a contract officer and will be responsible for multi-million dollar contracts and will be stationed at Laos Air Base in the Azores. Next, Second Lieutenant Joshua Maxwell of St. Mary's, Georgia. is being assigned to the Acquisitions Officer Career Field at Edwards Air Force Base, California, and will be responsible for cradle-to-grave management 
of the acquisition of electronic warfare systems. And finally, Second Lieutenant Danisha Pigla of Greenville, Alabama, <laughs> is being assigned as a force support officer at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, North Carolina, providing support services to the 6,400 military members and 600 civilians at the 4th Fighter Wing Global Strike Force. Chancellor Hawkins, as is customary in keeping with the highest tradition of military service, these newly commissioned second lieutenants will render their first salute to you as a presiding official, and then a second salute to fellow classmates and graduates who represent the American people they have sworn to protect and serve. May I draw your attention to the words of the alma mater on the fourth page, immediately below the national anthem. And will you please join Christopher Petrie, who you saw walk across the stage just a few minutes ago, as we sing the university's alma mater. This will be followed by the benediction. Please remain in place for the recessional until the platform party and the graduates have left the arena. once more. Lord, we thank you again today for this special day and opportunity to reflect and celebrate all that you have blessed these young men and women with. We pray that you would continue to bless each and every one of these promising individuals, that you would always remind them of who you are and what you have done in their lives. Be with them as they continue to grow, to make decisions, and prosper. Equip them with the spirit of thankfulness and strength. May they be rooted in you and look to you always as a source of all knowledge and truth. We thank you again, Lord, and rejoice in this beautiful occasion. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 